APCO Educational Topic Number 30, Post-Term Pregnancy. Post-term pregnancy is defined as reaching or extending beyond 42 weeks estimated gestational age. The incidence of post-term pregnancy in the United States is 5.5%. In this video, we will review how perinatal morbidity and mortality increase with a prolonged pregnancy. The objectives of this video are to identify the normal duration of pregnancy, list the complications of prolonged gestation, and describe the evaluation and evidence-based management options for prolonged gestation. Remember that we date pregnancies using menstrual dating. The estimated date of delivery is calculated as 40 weeks past the first day of her last menstrual period. Late-term pregnancy is defined as one that is reached between 41 and 0 days and 41 and 6 days. A post-term pregnancy is defined as beyond 42 weeks. The most common cause of post-term pregnancies is inaccurate estimation of gestational age. The patient's LMP date can accurately predict the EDD if she has regular 28-day cycles. Ultrasound helps more accurately determine the EDD when used in conjunction with LMP dating. The morbidity and mortality risk for both mother and fetus increase with post-term pregnancy. Maternal risks include increased risks of maternal vaginal trauma and cesarean delivery. Cesarean delivery increases the risk of infection, bleeding, thromboembolic event, and visceral injury. Fetal risks include increased risk of macrosomia, post-maturity syndrome, meconium aspiration syndrome, and oligohydramnios. Macrosomia increases the risk of operative vaginal delivery, cesarean delivery, and shoulder dystocia. Macrosomia is defined as an infant greater than 4,500 grams, and it occurs in 2 to 10 percent of post-term pregnancies. Post-maturity syndrome is associated with an aging placenta. It complicates 10 to 20 percent of post-term pregnancies. These fetuses have decreased subcutaneous fat and lack vernix and lanugo. The incidence of meconium passage increases as pregnancies become prolonged, and this leads to an increased risk of meconium aspiration syndrome. Meconium aspiration syndrome can lead to severe respiratory distress from mechanical obstruction of both small and large airways as well as meconium chemical pneumonitis. Oligohydramnios rates increase with prolonged pregnancies. Remember that the fetus will always try to protect blood flow to the fetal brain. When the fetus senses decreased placental flow, it will deprioritize blood flow to the kidneys in order to preserve blood flow to the brain. This results in decreased urine production. The rates of intrauterine fetal demise increase after 41 weeks estimated gestational age. Let's move on to interventions. First and foremost, there should be accurate assessment of gestational age. Ultrasound measurements should be used to confirm the estimated date of delivery. Membrane sweeping has been associated with a decreased risk of late-term and post-term pregnancies. In this procedure, an OB provider gently sweeps the amniotic sac away from the uterine wall at the level of the cervix and or lower uterine segment. Although this procedure is uncomfortable for patients, it can release prostaglandins that increase the chance of spontaneous labor. Antepartum fetal surveillance should be initiated at 41 weeks given the increased risk of intrauterine fetal demise. And finally, induction of labor should occur between 41 and 42 weeks estimated gestational age. This concludes the APCO video on post-term pregnancies. We reviewed a normal pregnancy duration, the importance of obtaining an accurate assessment of the estimated due date, and reviewed interventions for trying to decrease the morbidity and mortality associated with post-term pregnancies.